an edible perennial plant that needs to be cut back this time of the year is our asparagus. You can see the tall fern-like parts of the plants have just kind of laid over during the winter. But I also like to use my head shears here. And these stalks are not that solid. They cut pretty easily. I'll just cut these back here really close to the ground. See how easy, easy those cut, cut off there. And just kind of rake these out of the way here. But, uh, you can make a big mess in a hurry cutting these back. But we'll get these all cut back to the ground. That'll allow the sunshine in here to warm up this soil and it won't be any time at all before those new spears start emerging from the ground here. Now this is also the time of the year to fertilize your asparagus if a soil test indicates that you need to do so. If you are an organic gardener and you don't really like using synthetic fertilizers, a good way to fertilize your asparagus is to just apply a top dressing of compost. And we'll just put this down about an inch or two in depth around these spears don't want to get it too thick to where it keeps the soil from warming up. And if you live in a very windy area, you might want to take a cultivator or a rake and just lightly work this into the soil. Keep that from blowing away. Well, this is also the time of the year that we can plant asparagus plants. Now, when you're purchasing those crowns, make sure they're very healthy, don't have any signs of disease problems. And also, when you put those in the ground, make sure you plant them about four to six inches below the soil surface. Well, another edible perennial plant in our garden that we can plant this time of the year are strawberries. Let's set those out uh, early in the year here. If you have mulched over the top of your strawberries for winter protection, it's important to come out this time of the year and remove all of that mulch, let the sunlight get down there to those leaves, get them growing really well. You can see the bent livestock panel that we've got on on this bed of our strawberries here. This is to keep the deer from grazing on the foliage because they really like to come up and do that quite a bit. And a raised bed really is a good place to grow your strawberries. These have been here for about three years now and after we are finished harvesting them this spring we'll come in and renovate this bed. We'll take out about two-thirds of the plants and we'll try to leave in the center of the bed here about the healthiest, most vigorous one-third of those strawberry plants. And we'll also add some organic matter to kind of recharge that spot. Well, here in our vegetable garden, we don't have to add any organic matter this year. That's because last year we put down about four to six inches of compost and tilled it in really well but we do have some other beds and uh, spots around our garden where we'll have to add some compost this year. Now uh, if you're going to be adding animal manure as your source of organic matter to a vegetable garden it needs to be well composted or well aged and a good general rule to follow is that you shouldn't harvest any vegetables off of manured soils within about 120 days of the application. So it's really too late to add any to your vegetable garden for those cool season crops. But anything to be harvested later in the summer, it's still uh, okay to do that. Now another type of organic matter that we're gonna be adding to this portion of our vegetable garden is our cover crop that we sowed last fall. We sowed this on our program, you'll remember, we put down some seed of annual rye grass, cereal rye, Austrian winter peas, and some crimson clover. A little bit earlier we dug up one of the Austrian winter pea plants and you could just see all those little nitrogen nodules on the roots. So we're just really excited and thrilled that uh, we've got that nitrogen added to our soil in that way. Well, if you notice the height of this cover crop is pretty tall and you might be thinking, well, that's going to be pretty hard to till into the soil. So here to show us how to lessen that problem is one of our student employees, Autumn Nolting. So Autumn, how are we going to take care of this problem? Well, first we're going to mow it. But before you start mowing, you need to make sure that it's on the highest cutting setting possible. 
And you'll notice that we don't have a bag on. This is because we have the mulch plug-in, which will allow us to keep all the organic material on the soil. All right. Mowing the cover crop first will make it a lot easier to incorporate into the soil. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.